So welcome and thank you for having me here. Thank you for that wonderful introduction, Leanne. We have a lot to cover today because there's a lot of social media out there. Um, and so I want to get started right away. Uh, we hope to uh, be very focused in providing, meeting your uh, goals for being here today. We wanna in general, just make sure that you are having some takeaways to create um, uh, an effective social media strategy we want to examine all the unique characteristics of the various different platforms that you can uh, engage with. We want to review some of the, the key social benefits, key benefits of engaging with social media and uh, help you with some ideas for content uh, that you can create to share. And finally, we'll do uh, just a little bit of an overview of the kind of social media promotions advertising uh, that are available to you. So let's start with a poll. I want to get, I mean, you guys answered some survey questions in the registration, but let's get a sense of how many of you are actually using social media today. Leanne, would you initiate the poll, please? What are you seeing, Leanne? We'll just give it a few more seconds and I'm going to launch the polling now. Perfect, they're just awesome. sharing the results now. Excellent. I'm already seeing that it looks like a large percent of you of you are already sharing, so using your sharing your content on social, that's great to see. So let's get right into it. So when I started to put together this presentation, I would, you know, many of us who engage with social media every day, we think that we know it all, but I just thought I would uh, look and see what, what's been happening in the world of social media because it is constantly changing. And I honestly, I was really blown away by these statistics. I, I really didn't get a sense that the whole world was engaging with social media so much, which was probably a sort of a blind spot for me. But really, it, you know, it still continues to go. If 13, 13% more people engaged with social media in the last year. And a lot of people are engaging with social media on their phones, which makes a lot of sense to me actually. Um, and so we wanna keep this in mind when you're thinking about uh, incorporating social media in your strategy. A lot of people say, well, maybe it's not for me. I'm a B2B uh, organization, why would I care? Well, that's where you people are hanging out online. So it's really important for you to care about how to reach these folks. So the basics of social media strategy, one of the things that I really encourage my clients to think about is who is your ideal audience, your ideal customer? Who, where are they hanging out online? Because there's so many um, options out there. You want to sort of nar narrow down your focus. For so, so many of you, um, you know, it, it could be quite a broad audience, but there's always a niche that you really want to go after first, especially for small business, so that you're making sure you're spending money in the right place. You want to create a business account for your social media account or for your social media strategy because if you share personally, then your brand is your your person, not your your company. Uh, you want to uh, post relevant content regularly. So some people say, "Well, I post once a month," and because that's all I have time to do. Well, you know that's fine, but then that's not really a social media strategy. And you also want to set a realistic schedule. So what I recommend to people is to post at least uh, two or three times a week and share those duties. So if you're more than a one person company, just try to engage other people. So maybe there's a sales team or, you know, there's, there's different people in your company who could um, actually share a company account and post also uh, besides you. And you want to set alerts so that when people do comment on social media, that you're responding quickly, because that's what people expect from you. You can use a scheduling tool. And, you know, we have um, a local company called Hootsuite that has a really great uh, program for sharing um, your content to multiple platforms at the same time. 
And uh, we'll talk a little bit again about how once you've created this content, how to get it to a broader audience by using advertising. And finally, if you're doing any kind of program in marketing, it's really, really important to, to measure your metrics, to see what's working and what's not so that you know that you're spending your money and your time in the right place. So first of all, think about where do your ideal customers hang out? Where, does, where is your audience, your main audience? Where are they hanging out? You want to think about your best, the very best people. You want to focus on those people who are most likely to engage with your content and also the ones who are most likely to buy from you or come to your events, for example. And ideal customers ultimately will be more happy with the content you're sharing and the kinds of things that you're sharing with them, right? Basically, if they come to your event and, and you know they're amongst your target market, they're more likely to enjoy that event, for example. So which platform is ideal? Now, this is a really important question. Many of us default to, oh, well, you know, I like Facebook, so all my audience is going to like Facebook. Well, you know, think about who's your demographic. Are they just exactly like you or are they older? Are they younger, for example? So we're really going to take a little bit of a, a this is probably where we're going to spend a lot of our time today is thinking about the demographics of these different um, uh, social platforms. So starting with Facebook, because really that is the most social, most used social platform, even today, right? So it's kind of the, the first one that came out there. There's, you know, uh, 2.45 billion active users. And these are folks that are actively engaging with this uh, platform daily. What's interesting to me is that a lot of these, the, the, the most um, expanding um, audience for Facebook is those people that are older. And maybe that's because, you know, Facebook has been around so long and these folks have engaged with it for a long time. But many of them, so who maybe are grandparents now, are engaging with their kids, especially with COVID-19, they're engaging with their family online. And this is where I see a lot of my older aunts and uncles who are 80 years old are, are engaging on Facebook. It's really interesting. Um, what we're noticing is that uh, fewer teens are starting to use it and they're going towards Snapchat and YouTube. Um, in terms of the demographics of uh, geographically, we're seeing that uh, about 10% of the users are from North America. Um, and, but what's interesting to me, even though it's a small percentage of total audience, it's actually where you see the most um, ad revenue that's being spent. So most of the people engaging from a marketing perspective tend to be from North America, but we're seeing growth in Asia Pacific as well. And it, of course, in Canada, we have the luxury of having widespread adoption for internet users. And that makes sense, right? That's why a lot of people are engaging online. Um, people on Facebook tend to be high income earners. And we're seeing a lot of revenue from mobile, which makes sense given that a lot of people are browsing online. But what's really also the fact that people are browsing for about, you know, almost an hour a day is, is actually kind of blows, blows my mind. So how do we use Facebook for marketing? Well, it's actually, I mean, that's where Facebook generates its revenue, right? And it's, um, if, you, if you follow the stock market at all, you'll see that Facebook continues to grow in value because more and more people are discovering Facebook as a tool that they can use to, to get the message out. Um, so the business, your business pages will let you share links and images, post videos and showcase all sorts of things about your brand. You can um, make sure that you, so given this, make sure that your business page has your logo and, and has some engaging, um, uh, an engaging photo on it. Uh, try to create a unique username that people will find easy to remember. And um, you wanna make sure that you're filling out your basic information that, so that people can at a glance understand who you are. So because Facebook is a social platform, even though you're corporate, you can sh you know, share your human side. Um, humor is okay, of course, you just have to make sure it's, it's, it's clean. Um, you can post uh, links to your website and you wanna drive people to your website from your social. You can uh, share coupons, you can have um, a new product announcements. There's a, we're, we're gonna cover a lot of content later on today. And then finally, of course, you can pay to promote this content. 
So Instagram is actually from this, obviously it's part of the Facebook family. Um, it's a, a much younger platform in terms of how long it's been around and also um, who is on Facebook. But we've already seen like the, the growth is quite astonishing actually. We've got a billion people using uh, Instagram actually. And uh, a lot of these people, as, as we've noticed with other social platforms are outside the US and Canada. Uh, face, um, Instagram definitely skews younger, uh, but it's interesting. I'm seeing a lot of other people uh, my age, for example, on, on Instagram. Um, people are, uh, you'll see they're on there a little bit less, which makes sense because they are a younger demographic. And then um, a lot of people are using Instagram to sell their products. And so e-commerce is a big deal on Instagram. Um, so setting up an Instagram account for business, it's actually quite easy, but you just need to make sure that you're switching to the professional uh, area. I'm not going to get into the weeds on how to set it up, but when you're thinking about setting up your business account and, and what kind of marketing you want to do there, you want to think about, you know, what your goal is. Do you want to just get your brand out there to a lot of people? Um, do you want to get leads to your business? Do you want to get people to your website? Um, or do you want to sell products? So whatever you decide to do, make sure you're being very concise in how you describe your business because you've got very few words to do it. And the important thing when considering what kind of content to share is to make sure it's visually compelling. And again, as with all social platforms, if you're using it, then make sure that you're commenting, uh, responding to comments in a timely manner. So uh, what I was actually surprised to see is that with uh, both Instagram and Facebook, stories actually tend to be where most people are engaging more frequently. This really was news to me. And actually, once I, once I figured that out, I've um, been encouraging my clients to actually do some more advertising on stories. And it's actually we're seeing the, the traction come in. So because so many people spending time there and there the platforms to allow you to, to promote your content on there or just post your content as a business on stories, you have an opportunity to get out your brand out to a lot more people. So and what we what the stats say is that 58% of people who are on um, Instagram and Facebook, particularly Instagram, actually follow companies to understand the brands and products better. So, and, and lots of people buy as a result of seeing um, these products on Instagram. Um, I don't know if um, Leanne mentioned at the beginning, but all of this, this slide deck is going to be shared so you don't have to furiously scribble through. And there's a lot, I know there's a lot of information on these slides so we're, and we're going through it pretty quickly. Um, so LinkedIn, it's actually 18 years old. I, I've been on LinkedIn from the beginning because I've always worked in, in the business community. And um, uh, for if you are um, a, like a business to business organization, this is a really important platform for you. And the kind of content you share really is important. It, it can't, this is where you can't be too personal. It really needs to be more of a more, more business oriented information. And uh, um, LinkedIn is growing. It's obviously not as big an audience um, as the other platforms, but anybody who's sort of in the working age, you'll find them there and you'll see people from all walks of life there. I um, have worked for medical technology companies and I find doctors and surgeons on there. And then I'll also find um, people who are in finance or you know, a lot of tech people are on, on, are on um, LinkedIn. There's also great content from uh, people like Bill Gates. You know, that's where they, they share a lot of um, information just um, and, and they have a big following on LinkedIn. Um, the demographic tends to skew, skew males. You'll see more, some more men on LinkedIn. Um, you're seeing less mobile traffic on LinkedIn than other social platforms, which makes sense. A lot of us are uh, working on um, desktop computers uh, at work, and that's when they're engaging with LinkedIn. Um, so you can market, you can uh, promote your content on LinkedIn just as you can on the other platforms. 
Um, you can share your content there. Um, it's great to connect with lots of people in your circle. And when you post new content, it's shared with them. Um, again, you, uh, we encourage you to set up a business account and, and LinkedIn uh, makes it really easy for you to do that. And uh, again, as with all the platforms, the kind of content you're sharing is, is really important. You can also leverage um, LinkedIn groups to, to get involved in discussions about your product and um, services. Uh, Twitter is another one that actually is, is quite helpful for business as well as, uh, you know, you might think that it, it was just used for breaking news. Uh, I remember the first time I heard something first on Twitter was when Michael Jackson passed away. That was a long time ago. Um, but it used to be that platform where you found out that the latest news, but now people are using it to share their educational material. So one of the companies I use uh, work with, um, they, the audience is doctors and emergency medicine doctors have lots of groups where they share information about how they're treating patients. Um, I work for another finance company and they that's where a lot of finance people share their information. So it's actually a really good business tool as well. It does skew mail and a lot of the people who are on Twitter are um, have a higher um, level of income and in education. Uh, Twitter, like the other platforms, you can share your content, you can advertise on it. Um, you can, it's good to share content on there that reflects your brand and engages people. Um, and again, Twitter is a really active community for asking questions and stuff. So make sure that you are um, responding to questions that people ask. We can't get through a social media um, discussion these days without getting into a, a little mention of these other ones that are, are gaining so much traction in our world. Um, Snapchat is, uh, if you have a business that aims at um, teenagers or if you are hosting events that you want to attract teenage, teenagers to, Snapchat has a great um, platform for that kind of um, uh, social engagement. YouTube is actually um, one of the, the most prominent uh, social media platforms, great place to share content and um, also to promote your material. And TikTok um, is growing really, really fast outside uh, China. It's a great content platform. So given that you could be engaging with uh, more than one social media platform, I really recommend using a scheduling tool. These tools also provide excellent reports so you can monitor how you're doing. Um, you can see all your communications in one place. You can schedule um, content to go out in advance um, so you can be planning ahead all the time. I've got some pricing here. Um, you can find all this information on each of their, their websites. Um, Later, I've, I know that is a, it's a simpler tool, but it doesn't um, address all the social media platforms you may be using, but Hootsuite is a great option for if you're, especially if you're supporting local. So now that we've gone through all the different um, social media platform demographics, let's take a quick poll and understand um, what platforms you might be engaging with. Leanne, could you initiate the poll, please? You can choose more than one. This is when we get to see how many people are actually um, listening to the presentation, right, Leanne? <laughs> Absolutely, and we had great engagement. So just sharing the poll results now with everyone. Excellent, wonderful. Yeah, so it's not surprising, right, that people are using Facebook most, but Instagram is a close second. Um, interested in, in understanding what the others are, so feel free to maybe put it in chat and Leanne can share at the end of the presentation, maybe. Um, Awesome. So 
let's get a little bit into the content that we could um, be creating. There's so many different types that we uh, I see now on um, on the social platform. I think people are more creative than ever because there's so many ways to create content. And the more creative you are, the better. So content actually beyond social media just drives all types of online activity these days, right? Because it's so important for search engine optimization. So I, I tell people that with any marketing strategy these days, make sure that your website is just is um, suitable for communicating what you sell or are promoting. And uh, so content is really important for, for making sure that people are drawn to your site because they're searching for uh, topics that are related to what you're publishing. You wanna, you wanna create um, content, not just for the sake of developing content, make sure that it is actually relevant to your business and you're thinking about what your key audiences um, uh, care about. And education is, sort of like at the top of our list of, um, of the types of content that we want to create for our audiences. We just, um, it's kind of, um, we always talk about this as sort of a give and get. If we offer our audience education, then they're going to give us their attention. And so we, we um, in, in most of the marketing that I've been doing over the past 10 years, content has been about um, making sure that we're teaching our audience something that they want to learn. So you can provide tips and tricks. You provide FAQs about your product. Um, you might um, have testimonials of other happy customers or case studies talking about how those uh, customers are using your product or service. And uh, you want to ask your best customers for review, ask them to go to Google if that's relevant for business and then, and, um, uh, and, contribute how they feel about it. Here, I've got an example from one of the, the clients I work with, Rackets and Runners, it's a local sporting goods store. And they have, you know, um, hundreds of people reviewing there and they've got a really good rating, which, and Google loves that, right? Because when they're, when somebody's searching for sporting goods store, if you have a good rating, you tend to come up at the top of the list of search. Um, and then if you, if you have regular customers or your audience is engaging with you, send them, send them a survey after they've engaged with you, because that's when you find out who are more likely to maybe give you a testimonial. So it's a good way also to, to keep a pulse on um, how you're doing. Um, for business to business in particular, writing articles regularly to post on your website is really, really good for search engine optimization. And it's also great to share on social. This is where people um, are gonna engage with your content. And if it's strong content that they might not have seen before, they're more likely to engage it and share it as well and comment on it, which is what you want. Um, make it education, educational, especially, you know, um, if you're a business and all you talk about is your product features, um, it, it kind of gets boring people. There's no reason for people to come in and, and follow you. You want to make it varied and, and also um, an education is a good way to do it. And make sure whatever you're sharing has relevance to your brand. Here's an example of how you could share. This is a, a, a medical technology company. They sell ultrasound systems. And in December, we did a campaign on um, healthcare heroes where we just thank, we took all the testimonials we had and we posted one after another for, for 15 days. So the more of these you can collect, you can um, reuse them at different times of the year. You can use them in different campaigns. So that's the other thing about whatever content you are creating, you need to think about how, how am I going to use this in a different way? So maybe it's on my website today. Maybe it's in the case study section. Um, can I take, can I ask them for a different photo? Can I take a different testimonial? So always think about um, not just originating new content, but also how can you take your existing content and make it fresh? Um, infographics tend to be really great for social media because they're, again, they're very graphic. Um, if you're, uh, so this one that I'm showing you here is an example of somebody who is a content creator. So she's a designer who creates, um, so helps people create social posts. And that's why she's put together this infographic. This is very educational, 
uh, that could be useful to someone and then her brand is sort of there um, so that you know that she she's um, an expert in this. But again, it's visually compelling, it's, but it's very simple and it's very easy to digest and informative. Videos are super popular these days and it's actually more easy than ever to, to take some stills and have some captions and create your own videos. And we'll talk about some of those tools. Um, just make sure you're sort of telling a quick story. Um, the shorter, the better, especially on social media, because we all have very uh, short attention spans. And um, if you want to have long form content, you might go to something like YouTube. But in general, if you're doing on Facebook and Instagram, it really like 30 seconds, one minute is kind of as long as you want to go for video. Um, bringing back an example from Rackets and Runners again, um, it's good to post different kinds of content on a regular basis. So Rackets and Runners posts every two to three days. And because they their audience cares about um, pickleball as well as tennis and running, there's lots of different types of content they can share. Um, they, for here, actually, I don't know if I have, actually, if you look at this photo at the very top here, there's actually a, a photo of Bernie Sanders sitting in front. So I remember when, when um, the inauguration happened and so they took advantage of that. And that's an example of how you can take a story that might be in the news of see how you could make it relevant to your brand. And, and it could be a really quick social post that you have up there. Um, you can take, um, you can use product photos or you can share information about your own company. So if you are a customer facing company, then people love to know um, about what kind of dog you have or you know uh, what you might um, recommendation is for a product. So you know, don't be afraid to be personal. How do you think about like if if you are a lot of small business, um, you might not have time because you're kind of the, the jack of all trades, right? Um, you might want to think about starting really simply with with a social media program, and then as you get more sophisticated and you have um, a bigger budgets, you still don't have to go out and hire a social media person. There's lots of um, websites out there now that you can connect with people on a on a freelance basis and they're experts, but they might just give you five hours of their time and it, it's much more manageable for your budget. Um, you'll see an ROI on working with an expert um, in many cases, because they tend to be experts, they tend to be able to uh, fine tune your programs better and make sure that you're spending your money wisely and also creating those reports. Uh, if you are deciding to make your own, own content, um, in terms of videos, there's a local company called Lumen5 uh, that's very affordable and it lets you make these social media uh, videos in minutes, which is, it's really cool. Um, Canva is a, um, uh, another little layout program, much more easy than Illustrator that you can use to create your social media banners and create topic. I, I think this is a terrible name because I can never pronounce it. Uh, they just changed from Banner Snack to this company. And again, they help you create those banners on your, on your home pages really quickly. I'm just going to take a sip of water. My throat's getting a bit sore. So these are um, examples of places that you can go to find consultants that can help you with, um, uh, with your program. You can, uh, for, for, actually, even if you don't go to these things, you can think about, well, maybe I can hire a student from SFU or BCIT that can come and help um, put together these programs. A lot of these digital natives um, with a little bit of background in um, layout or how to write are really good at creating, helping with social media programs. So um, I know that SFU has a co-op program and BCIT has an internship program as well that you can take advantage of. And then, uh, so Fiverr um, is just like the name suggests. If you say, say you want um, a little, a voiceover for your video that you're creating, you can go on there and you'll find people, professionals who have the equipment and they'll create a, a, a voiceover for you for $20. So there's some very affordable ways to, to get help from an expert in your, with your program. 
Uh, so as promised, um, we're going to get a little bit into uh, how to advertise on social uh, because some of you in your um, surveys said, how do I take my social media to the next level? And um, unfortunately, uh, paying for it is probably your best bet. Um, if you think about how these social media companies um, make money, it's through advertising. And so um, it's in their best interest to actually show content that is being promoted. And that's why um, unless you've got some really spectacular piece of content that's getting um, some awareness, uh, you you know, through like it goes viral it's kind of rare for that to happen you need to find your audience and then promote it to them so uh there's billions of people who are active on social every day and um it's a great way to grow your audiences to to find a, a way to promote um your content by spending a little bit of extra money and you can um one, it's not sort of a, a one spend and, and you're done kind of scenario. It's technology today, you see this image about is retargeting creepy. Well, retargeting are those ads that you might see after you've been to a website. And, it's, it, you know, as a marketer, I can say that a lot of people do think it's creepy, but it works because it reminds people um, that your brand exists. I am also guilty of this. I will I will see something on social. I'll pop over to a website and I'll think, okay, I'm going to go check it out later. And then I forget about it. But then I see a remarketing ad and it reminds me to go and check it out. So it can be very effective. And uh, each of your social media platforms will give you a little pixel that you can put on your website. And then you can track the people who are visiting both your sites. And then you can create ads and, and, and go after that audience of people who have been on your website or on social platforms and, and, and reach them that way. So targeting on social media is what, what makes this medium so effective because you can go after people uh, based on um, who they are and how they're interacting with your brand already. So general, if you want to do this yourself, every platform offers simple self-serve tools and step-by-step -step directions. It really, they do really make it very easy for you. And um, the one thing that I will recommend is make sure that you narrow your audience as much as possible. Again, thinking about your ideal audience because it's easy to spend a lot of money unwisely on social. Start with a small budget and one platform. Figure out which platform has your key demographics and spend maybe $5 a day on that platform. And um, make sure that you're testing and monitoring weekly. You could actually, if you have the time, test and monitor daily, just especially in the beginning of any campaign to make sure that you're not spending all your money. Um, make sure you put a cap on the amount of money that you're spending daily, just especially if you have a tight budget. And you want to make sure that the same person isn't seeing your ad over and over again. There's a way to do that. So make sure you're checking those boxes that say, you know what, I don't want to make, have one person see it more than three times during this whole campaign. Especially if you have a very small audience, it's important to refresh your content regularly. And you want to um, promote it make sure that the first audience that you pick are those people who have already engaged with your content. Because you might have 2,000 followers, but if you leave things to do their organic thing, you might see seven or eight engagements on your post. And you spent like maybe a, a week and $500 to build something. Um, if you're going to do advertising on um, any of these platforms, you'll need a credit card because that's how um, they ensure that they'll get paid. So let's get into a little bit of specifics of how, uh, what kinds of things you can advertise on each platform. Um, so Facebook and Instagram are actually the same ad platform, but you go, you can, you, it's separate, but within the Facebook platform, that's how you access it. And from the Facebook advertising platform, you can choose to advertise on Facebook, Instagram, and also on Messenger. And there's a lot of information on, on Facebook itself on how to advertise. Uh, you, and again, if you 
are going after this program on your own, it's important to figure out what's your goal because that's the first thing that Facebook is going to ask you. Do you want to build awareness or you want to retarget people? You want to generate leads or you want to just make sure people see your content. So it's one of the things that you want to decide and it could be different for each campaign. Um, so again, referring back to demographics, if you're looking to decide where, if you have a small budget, do you go for Instagram or Facebook? Well, again, is it, are you going after younger people? Or are you going after older people? What type of content have you had? Do you have, do you have um, a visual, visual content or do you have a blog post? Um, and so these are all the things that you need to consider when you make these decisions. Don't just think about, well, I like Facebook better or it's easier to advertise on Facebook than Instagram. Um, you know, I'm being a little bit cavalier there, but yeah, hopefully you, you understand what I mean. Um, so you can uh, target very specifically on these platforms uh, beyond the location. You can um, uh, go after somewhat a, a specific age group. You can, um, so for example, for rackets and runners, we, if we're, we have um, a, a social post about pickleball, we'll skew higher. So we'll go from people who are from 55 years old to 70 years old. Um, if we're going after someone who is a tennis player, we might go for someone who's between the ages of 25 and 50. So these are the things that you want to consider. And you, you can also put in people who are interested in Wimbledon and the Australian Open. These are all the things that you can um, use to narrow your audience for these different programs. Um, you can inter you can advertise to other regions, so you can you can actually advertise to anywhere in the world. But I recommend that if you are um, going after non English speaking countries, that you customize your content so that it is um, tailored for the right uh, it, to the right language, unless it is just very very visual, because otherwise um, it's it's just it's not. I, we find that it's just not as engaging for for uh, a way to advertise. Um, you can set your budgets daily on these different platforms. Uh, when you start your campaign, you can schedule how long it is to run. I recommend that again, you start small and with shorter periods of time. And you, if you monitor and you see that it's doing really well, then you can increase the length of time that you're actually on. Um, you, you might keep that running. Um, and again, make sure that you are making sure that people aren't seeing your um, content too frequently because then the budget gets spent much more quickly. Um, make sure that you are, have your settings to do what you think is best rather than what the social media platform is advising because you know, they um, are going to try to make you spend the most possible money. Um, so there's lots of tips and tricks on how to set your limits. And there's tons of articles online. Um, there's lots and lots of content marketers out there who are sharing their own content and teaching you tips and tricks on how to do this well. So make sure that you're engaging with them before embarking on your own program. So we're going to go through some examples of the types of ads that you can do. Um, whether you are on Facebook or Instagram, a good, good visual is what gets people's attention. So um, just a simple photo with a headline and a little bit of information that, and that will, will just, if it's the right kind of photo, will get attention. Videos, again, are really uh, a great way to go. Keep them simple and you can create your own very easily. Um, if you have videos or even start with stories, if you have a very limited budget, I recommend that you go for stories um, first. Uh, here's an example of the kinds of ads that you can have on stories. Um, they, when you create those ads, um, this is where you can make them really personal because what's happening is you're trying to engage as a part of, as a part of a person's community. Uh, so um, here you see side by side, somebody's 
a child and then beside it is an ad. Um, and both of them sort of have an emotional connection because who among us wouldn't want to be on a beach today, right? So it's appealing to that emotional side of us. You can advertise on Messenger. I personally haven't done that. Um, so I, I don't know how it works. I can't really speak to it personally. But if you have um, a type of, uh, if you're a community that you want to engage with, that you want to do surveys with, it's a great way you can actually have chatbots connect with Messenger and then take people through a whole conversation without you even being there. Um, Facebook does make it easy for you to monitor your metrics and it actually offers a course on how to do this. You know, there's a little video on it, but I think there's more um, current stuff that you can find on YouTube. Uh, so I would suggest that you do some research into how to measure how your programs are doing. Uh, how do you come up with a budget? Well, I've sort of been saying throughout the presentation, start small, start with $5 a day. I've seen that work uh, really well. And again, as you refine and see where your audience is, what type of content they're engaging with, you can increase it. Um, the average co cost per click is like for people to actually see your content and engage with it is, is under $2. Um, but another way to go, especially if you're just testing the waters and just trying to great, get some brand awareness, is to just go by the cost of impressions. So let's say, okay, well, you know, I've got a t I've got ten dollars to spend today. Um, I can reach a thousand people for seven dollars, and then you this might be a good way to go. Um, just get so many people. Then you can once if those folks that you um, said. Uh, presented your content to engage with that content, then you can spend money to retarget them with different content and spend the money on the, the cost per click. So you sort of warm them up to this idea. They've, they've got to know your brand through just a, a more lower cost way of seeing that brand. And then you want to spend the money on cost per click um, that would actually maybe drive them to your website or to a shopping page. Uh, so, you know, you keep your uh, content really simple. This uh, here, I'm going to show you an example of a little video that was created for Facebook and Instagram by Rackets and Runners, and it ran for one week. We had a really small budget. It was, you know, under $200. We reached uh, over 25,000 people and 300 and almost 350 people clicked to the website, people who hadn't been there before. So see, it's just a very simple brand message. It has uh, some movement and it, you can see how that could be really effective in, in spreading the, the word about the brand. So LinkedIn, uh, I know there's probably not a lot of you that are, are into LinkedIn, but it's just, I, I like to go through it because it's, it is an important platform if you're business to business. Um, you once you create your business uh, profile, it's really easy to create an ad from there. There's a button right there on the top right, and LinkedIn will guide you through the process just like Facebook does. Um, you'll need a credit card. You often, when you sign up for a new business account, you'll get this little credit um, that allows you to test it out. And I think that's a really good way to go and see if you can find your audience on there. Um, it's really easy to target people by their job title on uh, LinkedIn. So I, um, but even then, even within that job title, you can then also talk about their interests. So for example, um, we work with uh, a, a medical technology company where they might be going after plastic surgeons. And then you can go, well, I want to target plastic surgeons who are doing this certain kind of procedure. Um, and then so that to really narrow your group down. Uh, another way to um, engage with people on LinkedIn is to subscribe for like a, a navigator account where you can send up to 20 emails a month directly to the types of people that you want to reach. Um, so this is definitely more of a business to business feature. So someone like um, uh, an account manager, for example, at, um, at Rogers would use, you know, to target small business customers, for example. 
Um, Twitter, same way, say another platform that we see um, uh, that's really easy to use. When you go in to Twitter, you ask whether you want to, um, if you have an ad that you want to promote or if you want to just promote your tweets to a broader audience. Make sure that when you're using Twitter that you are uh, linking it to the company's handle rather than promoting yourself. Um, and again, you can start very small on, on um, Twitter and you can have ads running for three months as long as you're changing up your audience and your content is educational and irrelevant all the time, not necessarily um, uh, timely to a certain event. And you can be very, very specific with your, with your audience. You can also follow those people. Uh, so for example, if you know someone is an influencer in your area, you can actually create an audience that follows that person. So you can be very creative in the way that you're going after creating for, formatting your audience on Twitter. Um, this, I just sort of wanted to, I think this is a really good example of why it's important to pay to, to promote some content on this. It, it could be any social media. This is actually one on Twitter. So here on the left, you see that this um, uh, webinar was promoted to people um, and it got almost 14,000 views. It was actually like a little video promotion of this webinar. On the right, it's um, just another social post that was not promoted and it only got 41 views. So dramatic difference um, and this, um, it, it doesn't really cost a lot, but it does really work, especially if you do wanna to get to a broader audience. So once you start to advertise, um, the next question is where do you send people? Um, where do you want um, to get what, what's your ultimate objective for folks uh, and I recommend that you are very thoughtful about where you send that click especially because you spent almost two dollars to get them there um, so for for what I mean by drive to a special landing page is a lot of people make the mistake is that they're advertised on Google or, or social and they'll send them to the home page and think, well, you know what, my home, my website is really easy to navigate and they'll find their way. But people are impatient. Um, it's uh, important to drive people to specifically the page where they can find the information that um, you have promoted. Uh, when they get to that page, make it easy for them to reach out to you. Uh, once they engage with the content and they want to. So this is an example here on, on the left, on the right, sorry, um, where, where there's a form at the top. Um, you might not want to be so aggressive. It really depends on how informative your piece of content was. Um, so if you, the, the ad was very simple, for example, it didn't give a lot of information, you may drive to a page and have the form at the bottom. So giving people a chance to read more about your product service or event, for example. Um, or if you are promoting a product and you wanna drive them to a shopping page, then make sure you're sending them to, so say, say it's a necklace, you're sending them to that page with the necklace rather than to the front where it could be all jewelry. So making sure that you're sending, people are immediately connecting uh, to the content that they see on the landing page is important to make sure, because a lot of people fear that they've gone to the wrong place. And that's why you wanna make sure it's very obvious that um, the piece of content ties to where you're sending them. Um, so besides a landing page, another place that you can send people is to a blog post. So you may have um, given people a little um, a quote uh, or a little snippet of your blog post, and then you can drive them to the page to read more. And that's sort of a marketing nirvana for all of us, right? So when we can get someone to engage with our content online and then take the time to go to the website and, and read more. Um, this was an example of, um, again, from Rackets and Runners, and it was about, well, when is the right time to replace my running shoe? Um, and so again, educational material, when people get to that page, they read the content, and then at the bottom, you wanna make sure that you're giving um, the people, if it's not a form, 
another place to go on your website that might engage them further. So in this case, you've read this, well, uh, I want to see what kind of shoes that they have available. Or maybe, oh, look, I can book an online fitting so that I don't have to wait in line um, amongst all the people who, um, you know, especially with COVID, it's, it's good to make sure that you're one of the few people in the store and you don't have to wait in line for half an hour. So these are examples of things that you can do to continue to engage your audience once they've gotten to the page that you wanted to get them. So you've done all this, uh, you've built your content, you've decided on your, your, your platform, um, but not, the story never ends there. It's, uh, this is probably the more, most critical slide that we'll look at today, especially for those of you who are already doing um, social media marketing. We want to make sure that we're measuring our performance. And there's many different elements of performance that we want to measure. We want to measure who did we reach? Um, did we, did we uh, you know, you can actually go and see a report on the, the types of audiences you have reached, especially if you've got different campaigns for each of your audiences. Um, you can gauge how they engage with it by how many people liked your content. It's kind of like the same thing as when you, you share a photo from your vacation. You kind of want to know, well, how many people liked it? Did anybody comment? You want to go and respond to them and thank them for, for connecting with you. Um, you, if you're, if you're using more than one platform, you want to compare how the same piece of content did on Facebook versus Instagram. So you know where you might want to spend more money and you want to see how, um, the followers might grow from month to month on these different platforms based on what you're promoting. Um, you want to see if people, uh, have gone to your website as a result of what you're doing or gone to your shop page. Um, and again, you can see later if they come back once you start your uh, retargeting campaigns, for example. Um, if, you, if you've set up um, a lead flow or a Google an Analytics, which we'll get into in a moment, you can see how long they engaged with uh, your website, for example, and whether you can tell the signals, the pages they visited, are they potential customers or are they somebody that's gonna turn into a lead? Did they fill in a form? Did they actually get to a cart, abandoned cart, or buy something? Um, and so you want to measure the percentage of people who get to these different levels to understand whether it was worth your spend. So if you've spent, so say we think about Rackets Runners again, they've spent $300 on a one-week campaign to promote a new tennis racket. Well, you know, you'd hope that they'd sell at least 10 tennis rackets to make that $300 worthwhile. But you might want to think and say, like, okay, well, especially if you're starting out your campaign, maybe it wasn't a direct ROI, but how many people did I get to engage with this uh, product? So it's not just pure ROI that you're measuring. You also want to factor in that getting these people to your website and engaging with your brand has value. And then you need to sort of decide based on your own program and your own company, how much that is worth to you beyond just getting a sale, right? Um, and then think about what types of campaigns and content um, got the most engagement, got the most conversions, uh, because then you can sort of, you know how to narrow your fo focus on the types of content to create and what to repeat. So free tools, um, Google Analytics is incredibly useful. It's a free tool provided by Google that you can hook up to your website. Um, it takes some doing to, to make sure that all the reports are done correctly, especially if you've got a, a sophisticated uh, website. And I would recommend having an expert help you set it up. It's probably, not, it's probably worth your while. Um, here's a, a clip from um, one of my clients, and it just shows you the kind of engagement they're getting from their various different platforms, Facebook at the top there by a substantial amount. And then Google Analytics, if you've got it hooked up to your shopping cart, will actually tell you how many sales came from those visits. What's interesting to me about this slide is that although LinkedIn was um, lower in the number of people it drove to the, uh, the site, it actually had more 
people, more of those people converting. So LinkedIn is actually tends to be a more expensive platform to advertise in. But if you're hitting the right audience with your message on there, it's better to spend that same budget to on, on LinkedIn than it is on Facebook, even though you might think it goes further because you've reached more people. So this is the whole social media platform. It's important to understand that it's very, very specific to the type of company you are, the products you're selling, um, and, and your audience. So um, make sure that you're looking at these metrics to really get a sense of what's connecting and who you're connecting with. Uh, Facebook has built-in reports as well, um, and it lets you see how your ads are performing at any given time. Um, you can set automated reports to remind you so they'll arrive in your mailbox daily, and um, you'll see the quick reports. And if you want to dive in, you can link easily to, to see more. Um, uh, web, even if you have somebody else managing your accounts, I tend to poke in um, every couple of days just to make sure that I see what's going on as well, because it is so easy to interpret this, especially once you know what you're looking for. So we've talked a lot, we've looked, learned a lot, hopefully. Um, let's uh, do another poll and see how many of you are planning to use social media advertising for your business. So polls up. Oh, wow. Excellent. 100%. That's good. Didn't turn you off. <laughs> Maybe so many of you were doing it already, but hopefully you picked up some tips on how to do it better. Um, so we're, I've talked really fast today. We've got through the, the slides really quickly, but hope that leaves us time for some questions. Um, but before we get to those, uh, just some things that we want to go over. You know, it, social media takes work. If you want to do it right, and uh, especially when you get into advertising, um, it, you have to spend the time. Uh, and if you don't have the time, working with uh, a consultant can actually be really effective. Um, you, if you do tend to go, if you go that route, make sure that you are asking for a monthly or weekly report so that you, you're keeping on top of all that. Um, there is actually going to be a uh, follow-up um, to this session that where you can learn how to do the advertising. So a very hands-on workshop. Um, and uh, I think Leanne will mention when that's gonna go up the registration for that. So if you, you found this useful, that might be the next step that you do. Um, do spend the time thinking about which platform is right for your ideal audience. So um, a lot of, I mean, we talked about so much detail today, but you know, I invite you to go through the, the presentation again and um, uh, go through the demographics that we covered. And I think on many of those slides, I indicated where I got that information. So you can actually go to those pages. Uh, I got a lot of that information for companies like Hootsuite and Sprout, who are your, um, you know, they're, they're your tools for, for social media um, execution. And they, they are very good about educational materials. So you can subscribe and make sure that you're keeping on top of your ideal audience because it changes all the time. You wanna develop engaging content for your target audience. Um, don't burn yourself out by going after everybody, especially initially. Um, and if you do go after different audiences, make sure that your, your audiences on social media, especially if you're paying for it, uh, are very specific to that audience. Um, if you, do spend a lot of time and effort and money developing content. I recommend that you pay, spend a little bit to promote that content. I've seen it work over and over again where companies spend thousands of dollars. They might have tons of people working on content, but they don't measure how many people are engaging with that content. So, you know, it, it is worth it to, I can tell you, I've seen the ROI over and over again. And especially if you are spending the time and money to do a social media campaign, um, whether it's organic or paid, make sure that you're measuring and you are adjusting as you go. And there's an opportunity um, 
you know, in the old days, you print a brochure and, and it was done. Nowadays, everything can be changed within minutes on your website, on social media. Uh, take advantage of that flexibility and um, make sure that you are um, changing things as you go. Thank <laughs> you.